Welcome to this edition of On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Dudley Najib, one of your hosts, along with Linus Najib, who is your co-host for today. And you just saw an excerpt of what was going on with the State Center Community College District press conference that was held last week. And it was really put on by the Concerned Citizens, in which On Me helped to gather the information and put together for the community. And so what people just saw a few minutes ago were some of the students from Fresno City College that had concerns in regards to Dr. Blue. So we heard the chanting and all the things that were going on that day. And we saw that students were confused, and we're going to be talking more about that. But you were there, and you had a presence. What, what was your quick 30-second thought on that? I was very excited. I was shocked at first to see so many students showing support for Dr. Blue. I was um, working the cameras, looking at all the excitement and all the uh, attention that was brought up upon the situation. And we'll be talking more about that because there is a, a big part of that that still has not been dealt with and it really has to do with the process issues. We are going to be hearing from those community leaders. We took the excerpts from that press conference and wanted to include it for this morning, On Me Sunday Morning, and we'll be taking it piece by piece, leader by leader, the things that they talked about. But first we want to talk about On Me and its support, because I know people are asking, what is On Me? And we have to give people the clarity and a better understanding of how their support mm -hmm. helps not only AMP TV, Mm -hmm. Helps the California Advocate newspaper that's been here for 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. Helps Valley Black Talk Radio that's also been here for several years. And one of the greatest icons, Woody Miller, who mm -hmm. was the uh, vision, visionary person behind that. And so we have to bring people up to the concept of what is this on me? Because I know people are still asking, what is on me? Mm -hmm. Well, the symbols of on me means one new media expression, okay? And On Me is designed where we can be an impact to the community with all the medias coming together, California Advocate, Valley Black Talk Radio, and AMP TV. So we are here when um, we are trying to go out there and get the businesses to support us and also the community to support the black media. Uh, we have an outlet to express what's really going on in a black community. What we're finding, though, is a lot of black businesses, I can only mm -hmm. speak on who we've had to deal with one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. are having a challenge of not even being able to have the dollars to put off to the side for advertising and marketing. We had that conversation mm -hmm. um, a few months ago about the same concerns. So now we're trying to get the people involved so that they know that a $75 membership is assisting the California Advocate with its daily operations, assisting AMP TV, which has its list of challenges, mm -hmm. as we too have to go out there and fight, try to get those advertising dollars. Exactly. And so one thing that I want to bring up to the community, what we have done with the On Me media experience is we've had to become our own agency. We mm -hmm. had a lot of challenges. We did try to collaborate and go to other agencies, go to other businesses, and we found out they were with particular agencies, mm -hmm. which we've dealt with one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. We found a greater benefit in On Me being its own black media agency mm -hmm. because who would know their audience better than the people running it, such as AMP TV, California Advocate, and Valley Black Talk Radio. Yes, so I do want to say that out of the challenges and out of the experience have come this light at the end of the tunnel, uh, so to speak, where we have all come together as one agency. Mm -hmm. I was, when I would go to a lot of the different companies, and, and it's very, very frustrating um, to find out. Um, I want to mention a particular company's names, but they would give me uh, um, comments of, well, um, you need to go talk to my media agency, such and such. Or they would say, well, um, you, we need to go talk to our corporate office. And that's kind of limiting us right here, because if I go to the media agency, which we attend few times, sure. numerous times, yeah, they just look at you like, and, and we're trying to do business with them, but they won't throw us no business, purposely. And they are, my feelings are they were very cold. Um, there was no action towards any monetary benefit for a black media. And you know what the of. irony of that is? Mm -hmm. We know that in Fresno alone, there's about $4.6 billion buying power. Yes. Central Valley, it's probably about 6.6 .6 billion yes. buying power. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And that buying power is not being spent with a lot of the black businesses who are struggling. I have to bring that up because I know that On Me is going to start doing a uh, flash mob where everyone goes to that one location to support that business because they're really needing it. Yes. From restaurants to printing businesses, everyone that we've run into have had the same challenges. If we do the numbers, um, if we get, let's say, 500 people of our, that's watching this right now, 500 people paying $75 a year. And let's break that down. That's only $6 a month. To each media agency, that's $2 a month. So to if, each media entity. Yes, Valley entity. Back Talk Valley Back Radio, Talk Radio, California, California Advocate, et cetera, and PTV. If we were to get 500 people, mm -hmm. whether it's businesses, uh, consumers, just regular people that care about. 500 people a month? 500 people a month. Mm -hmm to do $75 a year. That would help sustain us with a lot of the day-to-day -day functions. Definitely would. And that would give us a media out, output where we can give you the um, programs like the ones you're watching right now. And a lot of people are wondering, well, where do those dollars go? And we nitpick. One mm -hmm. thing we do with our community, we nitpick when certain things don't happen our way or when uh, a certain media outlet is not at an event, not realizing that it takes money, mm -hmm. it takes uh, a little bit of dollars to get those people or interns to those different events, yes. which people want covered. Mm -hmm. And it's not like um, we're asking people to cover, but all, all the time we just don't have that manpower. Yes, the dollars go to um, help facilitating the interns that we have, help facilitating the equipment, help facilitating the gas to go to those locations. Also, with the California Advocate, they have an overhead with the newspaper. You know, paper is not cheap. Publication, the printing. Yes, yeah. all that. So, And you know what's so ironic is that it is our community that looks toward that paper for mm -hmm. anything that's coming out, any news. Yes. But they're the most critical with that paper as well. <laughs> yes. And I just want to bring that to people's attention is that overhead and sometimes a lack of manpower can be a challenge to any medium. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we're ignoring it can't reach out to you. A lot of times we're trying to wrestle with those monetary issues, wrestle with some of those concerns and just being able to get those advertising dollars. Now, how would a person be able to pay the $75? What, is it a certain process? I'm just asking you, what, what would they have to do to help and they want to show support to the black community and what would they get so for the computer savvy person they can just go online and just click the button and then you're able to pay right away and i we're figuring that might be the younger folks from 30 mm -hmm. on down because what we've experienced is that a lot of our watching audience maybe don't necessarily have access to the internet mm -hmm. or perhaps are not as comfortable with the internet and technology in general so we've even given another recommendation you're more than welcome to either drop off from money order, a cashier's check, uh, to the Cafe Aroma, mm -hmm. which were there. And it, we say between the hours of 10.30 to 2.30 just for that, even though it's Cafe Aroma is open earlier than that. Mm -hmm. We're just saying from 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., people can either drop off a check, a money order, and that way they know that their dollars are helping the California Advocate, Valley Black Talk Radio, and AMP TV. Not only are they helping, but they're listed as a supporter mm -hmm. in the California Advocate newspaper in the On Me section. For AMP TV, you're also listed as a as supporter during AMP TV programming. And also in Valley Black Talk Radio, you're listed on the website, their Valley Black Talk Radio TV program and online program. Mm -hmm. So it's that acknowledgement and being able to show that we appreciate every dime that comes in, every dollar. It really will help our interns who we want to educate. A lot of times we are just teaching them for free or on a Sunday for sometimes six hours at a time mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that they are prepared for the workforce. We want to make sure they know what it takes to be that media savvy individual in broadcasting, print media, from production experience, being behind the camera, knowing how to gather news and information, knowing how to interview, all those skills that are necessary anywhere else. Mm -hmm. We just take a little bit more time and spend a little bit more time with our interns. Yes. And so I think I, we just want to make sure we address that. So you're saying if 500 individuals mm -hmm. just donated, 500 people a month donated the $75, that that would be how much a year, would you say? That'll be $450,000 wow. a year. Wow. 
$450,000 a year that's split up between all three entities. And that would help to keep the operations. And people are saying that this is an important outlet. That uh, on me Sunday mornings, they look forward to this programming. They look forward to Valley Black Talk Radio. Mm -hmm. And they definitely look forward to that, that California Advocate newspaper. That's why we know people get antsy when the paper hasn't come out, not realizing that there's a cost to the yes. publication coming out and uh, low manpower. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to make people aware of that part of the process. And that's why April 3rd, mm -hmm. we're having our uh, a press conference. Yes. And it's a lot of the community leaders that are coming out and speaking in regards to the support of black media. It's phase one. Phase one is really looking at the report cards that will be coming out on elected officials, banks, and insurance companies to see how they are supporting from uh, black media to black organizations to some of those things that we look at when we're voting. Mm -hmm. That's important. Is your elected official that you're voting for supporting your local black media or your local African-American businesses or are there black professionals in their camp? And those are things that we hope that people will join us. And that, again, April 3rd, that uh, press conference will be on April 3rd. That's on Thursday at 10.30 a.m. in front of the California Advocate newspaper office located on 1555 East, East Street. Again, that's 1555 East Street in Fresno, California, 93706. And we hope that you can be there mm -hmm. and be able to show your support. Meanwhile, we've got to take a break. And after we come back from the break, we're going to be talking about the State Center Community College District. I want to say part three, part four. I don't know what part this is. But we know that this is a part that we definitely want to share with our On Me Sunday Mornings viewing audience so they understand what's going on and really what is the next step. You're watching On Me Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back. Picture perfect. Learn how to take the best photos from celebrity photographer and journalist Ken McCoy in his Primer Photography Workshop, Sunday, April 13th, from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Call 559-273-8780 for more info. Visit Salam Seafoods, located on 841 F Street in Fresno, California, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 p.m. Stop by Yogurt Etc. Great dessert, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., located on 2311 Kern Street.
host along with Linus Najib, your co-host. One thing I forgot to mention about the April 3rd event, that's the phase one for black media, the black community coming out to support, is that there is a special election edition that's coming up. In fact, Valley Black Talk Radio has an election edition that will replay, that will have aired on Monday, this upcoming Monday, mm -hmm. that we're going to replay on AMP TV or during AMP TV programming throughout mm -hmm. this week. And then California Advocate does have its special election edition in May as well, mm -hmm. and so does AMP TV. And so that's when we're going to have people like Les Kimber, uh, the, who was the founder uh, mm -hmm. of the California Advocate newspaper, and other folks from the community who will at least give us some insight mm -hmm. to some of the upcoming election. I think that'll be fun. Yeah. Okay, so we want to let you know about the State Center Community College District press conference that was held last week. Community leaders came out to speak. Students also who came out to protest. Again, this was a lack of... Um, I would say transparency that's happening, and this was at Fresno City College where you said lack of transparency happening on the campus. We first begin with the, the NAACP president, Pamela King, who fires up the crowd. Let's take a look. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Pamela King, and I represent the Fresno branch of the NAACP. And our branch is very concerned about the process taken by the State Senator College Community Board. We question if the rules of the Brown Act were violated. Did they follow the rules? We question this. The NAACP wants to ensure that every citizen has rights and no one's individual rights are violated. Furthermore, we are concerned that all parties in this action have been treated fairly. The NAACP is fired up and ready to go yes. on this yes. issue. The NAACP is fired up yes. and ready to go. Yes. NAACP, fired up and ready to go. Thank you. So we just came back from that hmm. clip with Mrs. King, uh, president of the NAACP. And they're, they are all about looking at the process. Mm -hmm. And we know that what has happened in the last, uh, I want to say, a couple of months now with Dr. Deborah Blue, who is the State Center Community College District mm -hmm. Chancellor. And we're still confused on whether it's emeritus status, and we're going to talk about that. Okay. Addressing the crowd and getting them fired up getting them fired up to help them understand that there has been some uh, possible Brown Act violations that we mm. need to discuss and take a look at. And we're going to be talking more about that with the Brown Act. And we have a lot of the other speakers that are going to be speaking about that. And some say that, I hate to say, but integration is kind of split us up versus keeping us together. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate when we're looking at from business to media information. Once, once upon a time, I'll say, before segregation, one thing was the community was very tight knit, so mm -hmm. people knew what was going on at all times. Yes, they had a, and there wasn't internet, <laughs> <laughs> no. and not everybody had telephone access, but they still knew what was going on. Yes, but one student, well, I was surprised, came up to us and said, "I'm a student here, and I didn't know nothing about it." And when I asked other students, we didn't know anything about it. So the only way I found out anything about it was through your program on Bounce TV. Right. So I was like, really? You go to school here and you're a, a leader and a, one of the presidents of one of the organizations here and you're black and you're a male and you didn't know anything that was going on about the chancellor? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very surprising. And so that's what we're seeing the frustration of the students that are, are chanting even in the beginning of this program. Let's take a look at Tate Hill, who's the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce uh, president and CEO who explains the undue process and what happened uh, at the March 17th mm -hmm. special meeting and also talks about just in general the issues that have uh, been happening. So I, my, again my name is Tate Hill I'm president of the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce and also a former student at Fresno City College. All right. I think it was important for us to share uh, and maybe just give a little bit of background concern about uh, the process uh, that has the board of uh, trustees have taken over the last uh, few months. Uh, one, we were concerned about uh, there was a, a meeting, uh, a board meeting uh, last week in which uh, the, there was one agenda item 
uh, regarding the potential dismissal or reprimand of an employee. Uh, at that particular meeting, uh, also there was an appointment of a deputy chancellor uh, for the, uh, the district. There was no agenda item that itemized that this person would be hired. The normal process would be that uh, for this level of a, of a hire, that would be a specific agenda item so that the community would be aware of it and that they could make comments and so forth. That information was not provided as a part of the agenda uh, and that, part, that information only came out as a part of a closed session uh, um, uh, uh, outcome. Also, there's no precedence for there being a deputy chancellor within State Center Community College District. Uh, they have the position of, of vice chancellor, uh, which is uh, under the, the chancellor's office, and those positions already exist. And so there's no precedence uh, for there being a, a deputy chancellor at this particular uh, district. We're also concerned about access to the state center uh, meetings. Um, when I arrived here at about 5.15 for a 5.30 meeting, uh, the initial front doors were uh, locked. Uh, someone had to let me in and then when others came in later uh, to, uh, to hear the outcomes of the closed session component, uh, they had found the doors locked. And so uh, as far as process and access and transparency, uh, there's some real concerns about the process in which uh, the district has gone, uh, gone about. Also there's some, just some questions as it relates to the duties and the roles of uh, this new deputy chancellor uh, and also the role of what we believe the the current chancellor Dr. Deborah Blue her contract was amended uh, for her to conclude at June uh, 30th 2014 with this new amendment uh, she is uh, we're really not clear on her role and the role of the the deputy director and the changes from the previous amendment uh, to her contract. So we're just really concerned about the process um, as we're talking with uh, a number of individuals uh, as we have a lot of students here that don't really understand what has gone on with the chancellor that has served their district for the last four years. So we're really concerned uh, about the process and it, it, and it creates an unnecessary uh, fog on the district and those are sentiments that we expressed at uh, both of the previous special board meetings, and those sentiments were shared by a number of uh, community leaders. So thank you. So Tate Hill talked about some of those issues like the doors being locked. Mm -hmm. I know he was one of the, um, he, he actually went up to the meeting. Mm -hmm. He was there, the doors were locked. We have eyewitness footage of someone that went to the meeting and the doors were locked. Mm -hmm. That would be considered a violation of the Brown Act. People say, well, is it in the State Center Community College District policy to have the doors locked and to be able to have special meetings thrown together at any random time? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what the Brown Act prevents. Mm -hmm. It stops boards, especially public entity. Remember, this is a public entity mm -hmm. that our tax dollars pay for. It stops them from being able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm concerned that people are taking it personal. We, we've said to people over and over again, this is not about Dr. Bill Stewart, who somehow was hired we have to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in this undue process situation, not only that, but he was. If, uh, we go back to the footage and we take a look at this picture here, we see him in the meeting of the closed session, and yet he's not even a staff person. Mm -hmm. He's not on the staffing of Fresno City College. He's not on the staffing of State Center Community College District. So nothing before or prior to that is he on the staffing of Reedley College or anything like that where he should have been in the closed session. Mm -hmm. especially if he wasn't on the agenda. That's <laughs> been the biggest issue. You're not on the agenda. And so those are some of those public concerns that people talked about and addressed. N not on the agenda, but you got hired during the special meeting, which was s dealing with dismissal of an employee. And what are your thoughts my, on that? My thoughts is we are, um, when I was listening, and I've been listening very carefully of the comments that um, students were saying, comments with staff was saying, and nobody knows why <laughs> she's being let go. The highest, one of the highest position, if not the highest position. Or correction, retirement early. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, retirement, uh, retirement early, let go. Bottom line, she don't have the power okay. to be there. Okay. Which For is what still, reason? that's also confusion too. Does she have the power or not? And that was one of the community concerns that were addressed during uh, that conference. Yes. Who's in charge? The deputy chancellor, which is a made up position, by the way. There but, is no deputy chancellor but, position. But nowhere. the question is, okay, what did, what have she done? Did she steal the money? We know she didn't steal that. The money, that many people. That would have been in the news because yeah. of that's just the way it is. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what this humble, sweet, young, beautiful lady has done. And I can't, I can't understand <laughs> why they moving so fast and so recklessly, in my opinion, to get her out. It's very reckless, but that's when it takes the community and viewing audience to say, well, wait a minute, there is something wrong. How do you hire somebody in a closed session and yet the community, again, this is a public entity, State Center, community, State Center Community College District Board of Trustees is a public entity. Mm -hmm. They are elected by us. We are the citizens that control that. Mm -hmm. We are the ones that have asked them to be the representative, to be our eyes and ears, mm -hmm. where they're supposed to be doing this for our, our, our student population mm -hmm. and helping them for, to further their education instead of all these dirty politics. Mm -hmm. I think that's the problem I'm having is the dirty politics behind all this. Well, the problem I'm having is they didn't think that we would be broadcasting this. They didn't know. We're smart enough to know that there are, brown, there are clear Brown Act violations. And in fact, the media, I can just speak on behalf of the black media, California Advocate, Valley Black Talk Radio, and AMPTV did a Freedom of Information Act request. Mm -hmm. Now they have 10 to 20 days to respond and be able to give us a documentation from Board of Trustee emails, any correspondence in regards specifically to Dr. Deborah Blue. That's okay, but bottom that. line is, let's look at the bottom line. She is being forced to early retirement. True. Okay. Now, by her being forced to early retirement and they put in somebody else rather quickly. Too quickly. For what reason? Mm -hmm. There's no explanation. All they send is, is confidential due to. And they have to do that due to personnel, but they're taking it a little bit too far. Yeah. It's a little bit too far. And had there been a track record of Dr. Blue doing so terribly all those four years, because she's been here since 2010, mm -hmm. and mind you, she helped to turn that district around as much as I've seen comments online where they beg to differ as, in regards to accreditation, but she is a part of that. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that was interesting, I'm going to go into this. Um, uh, Brother Kayende, um said this very eloquently. There is nothing really on campus really to represent black people. Well, before we go into that, let's watch Dr. Jerry Santos, okay. who spoke on behalf of Larry Dixon, who's the president of the black faculty and staff. Let's take a look at what she had to say. Good afternoon. I, my name is Dr. Jerry Santos. I am a member of the African-American faculty and staff. And today, I'm, my talking points is on behalf of Larry Dixon. And I will tell you this, as a faculty member, uh, we all were concerned about the process, but I cannot begin to question the board's decision and how they, how they arrived at those decisions. I will tell you this, that everyone has a right to due process. Everyone has a right for respect and dignity. I'm not quite sure that that was afforded to Dr. Blue, in my opinion, and, and I, that's my opinion, and I think I echo the sentiment of many people when I say that. With that in mind, though, we have to plunge forward on behalf of students. We cannot forget the focus. Our focus is educating students. And in particular, those students who are underserved and underrepresented, underrepresented. At this point, I can tell you that the board is elected by their constituents. And so if you have concerns and issues about the board, the constituents need to plunge on with the battle. I will say this, for those of you that ask me questions regarding Dr. Stewart, I'm not here to have a Dr. Stewart's agenda because everyone knows me by now that I will say what I need to say when I need to say it. I will say this, that I would not and could not uh, withstand, in my opinion, the public, in my opinion, the public beating that occurred with Dr. Blue. So I will tell you that I was not in agreement with that. Could things could things have been different? Could things have been handled a bit differently? Yes, I think anything that we've, we do in life could be handled in better ways and in different ways. Do everyone have a right to due process? I certainly believe that. For my own self, I believe that, and I believe that for my students. But at the end of the day, we need to look at student success 
We need to look at student failures, how to fix those success. How are we gonna combat the issues in the classroom? So for that, you will have to look to our staff and our faculty at Fresno City College because we experience what goes on on a day-to-day -day basis. We experience the plight of the students. We experience their difficulties. We experience their success and their gains. So I will encourage you to come in and talk to us, talk to the counselors, talk to faculty, come in and do all of those things that is necessary because you cannot do anything fighting a battle on your own. So we just watched Dr. Santos' comments, and some of them, we didn't get to play the whole thing, mm -mm. but in the, what she did say, and you can watch online if you want to watch the whole thing on onmetv.amptv now, what did concern me is that she had to bring in these generalities where before, this was the fiery Dr. Santos yes. that was very strong in her comments, and she did make that a point to say that at the beginning, that people know she's very opinionated, but then she had to back off. I don't know if there's intimidation, because you did have district employees that were standing, the two district employees, the two tall white dudes, standing behind <laughs> the crowd when the students, and you'll see students, the students later ask, who, who are those two guys, who are they? Mm -hmm. You know, because there was no, um, I guess that was just an intimidation tactic. But I saw her kind of backtrack or very worried about what she had to say. This is happening to a lot of staff members that are afraid of what other ugly tactics are gonna be done against them. Well, you know, she wanna pay her bills. They pay her bills. This is true. And if she were to say something too offline, she got to go back to work for them. She under their payroll. So she has to, in a way, uh, speak, um, I would say, carefully mm -hmm. in that circumstances. And I have to remind folks, it's not about Dr. Bill Stewart, and she brought that up as mm -hmm. well. It's really about the process of how Dr. Blue was treated and the process of how things culminated. There's several special meetings, and normally you don't call special meetings like that unless it's like a dire emergency. Mm -hmm. Let's say that the chance is really ill and there's no one to fill her place for the next several months. That would be considered an emergency. All these ridiculous special meetings that are held are kind of borderline when you're looking at the Brown Act, which is looking mm -hmm. at at emergencies where students are in danger or the education is in danger. And to say that they had to let Dr. Blue go early or go on early retirement because students are in danger, I think is uh, take stretching it a bit. Yes. Stretching it too far. I think if anybody were to meet Dr. Blue, just meet her for less than a minute and get to know her in a sense, they can see there's no harm, there's no emergency or anything that can rush um, her forced retirement. You know, it, it, she don't seem like That's, a threat. That, that is the problem. Again, there has not been a track record of showing this terrible performance for her to be let go early. But after the break, we'll also hear from student Rodney Hawley, who is the president of Simba, who also has some words to say and some concerns. You are watching On Me Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back. Picture perfect, 
learn how to take the best photos from celebrity photographer and journalist Ken McCoy in his Primer Photography Workshop, Sunday, April 13th, from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Call 559-273-8780 for more info. Visit Salam Seafoods, located on 841 F Street in Fresno, California, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 p.m. Stop by Yogurt Etc. Great dessert, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., located on 2311 Kern Street. Central Community College District concerns of undue process and violations of the Brown Act. And mind you, just wanted again to reiterate that the black media has requested a Freedom of Information Act. Does anyone can do this as far as if you're an individual or if you're part of the media and if you're concerned about any violations and based on a public entity. And this particular Board of Trustees is uh, by our tax dollars, uh, mm -hmm. these are public entity. This is a public entity that we elected into these positions. Mm -hmm. And three of those seats are up. Three oh. seats are, are up uh, this year. And so we challenge people to find out more information. If they're in your area, you've got to be able to sign up by August. Or no, July. July is the deadline. Yes. So we'll have to get that deadline date, and you'll see that flashing across your screen for that July deadline date if you want to be a candidate for your area. And you'll also see on your screen those areas that are open. And I know we talked about those areas that are open even on the Valley Black Talk radio segments. You can always go back to the vbtradio.org website to be able to find out where we go more detailed in the area of positions that are open. Uh, so. We are going to watch Rodney Hawley's comment, and mm -hmm. he's the president of the Simba. This mm -hmm. is the student you were talking about before. Yes. Let's take a look. My name is Rodney Hawley, and I'm president of the Simba program, strengthening young males through academic achievement. Um, what I want to say is, is that we didn't understand why Ms. Blue was fired because they kept it so hidden from us as students. And it is through these programs that we are in that are mostly African American right now, but I, this is not just about African American. Right. This is about FCC, period. Yes. This is about what she brings to this college. And we are here to let the staff know and the faculty know that we are supporting her 100% yes. because yes. it is by her that we stand here in these programs and are able to say what we feel about this school, some of our teachers, some of our professors. That is why we are here people who are strengthening our minds. And I might not be as young as a lot of these college students, but I'm here for the same reason. And I'm getting it just, just like they are. And, and as they are teaching me, maybe I can teach those that are younger than me. That is the process which is being taught here. Miss Blue has brought that to the table. And I think that us as students need to stand for her. When, because that basically, that's what they are here for. They are supposed to be giving us what we want. And we want who? Miss Blue. Blue, that's who we're here Blue. for, and Chancellor so Blue. Chancellor Blue. Blue, and so that's why I'm here. I am here to just stand up for my part, and I don't stand up and I don't talk a lot in front of a lot of people, but today I felt like this is very important. 
because believe me, my education is very important to me. And the person that has brought that to me is Chancellor Blue. All right. Okay, and we're back. So we just got through watching Mr. Holly's comments. Mm -hmm. What what are your what what do you feel about his comments? Well, to leave the students in the dark um, is just is devastating. Or purposely done. Yeah. I want to say, if you want to just be just frank. just just to leave them in the dark, not knowing what's going on with their leadership, not right. knowing what's going on with what's happening on the campus, sure. on multiple campuses. It's not uh, a good sign of transparency. Mm -hmm. It's it leaves room for what's really going on. Well, to me, it's and, like politics as usual, right? Well, because that's where people, when they get in these positions, sometimes I won't say all board members or people in positions of power. Sometimes it's misuse. Well, yes, you, you can look at it as being misuse, but at the same time, he felt betrayed. Mm -hmm. He felt betrayed. Here he is going to school thinking he's under a diverse setting, thinking um, everything is done by the books mm -hmm. correctly, and finding out that it's not. And that's the part that I think that gets Reverend Dr. Floyd Harris fired up, and you'll see his comments right now. Let's take a look. Dr. Kayende, can you come up, doctor? Yeah. The reason that I said that I have to recognize my elder is because of him is why all of us are here today. Yeah. Because he planted a seed years ago in this community all right. that he will come back to this place and see the young people here to his left, to his right, to the front, that you are the leadership of the next 21st century. You need to give yourselves a hand for standing up today. Understand that there's been many black people, Dr. King, Megan Evers, many women in the struggle of civil rights yes. have died for you to stand here today. All right. Don't worry about them videotaping you. Uh -huh. Don't worry about the police driving around uh -huh. because you have a constitutional right to stand on this sidewalk and protest for what's right. That's yeah, right. This city is like Mississippi. Okay. Yeah, Let me say now. that again in case some of you didn't hear that. Say it again. I said it's like Mississippi. Yes, it is. Lynching going on in this city. Murders going on. I'm talking about an education system. We're talking about the same county that don't have a black principal for us, for our children. Okay, we've just watched Dr. Floyd Harris, who's always animated and always that one to get the crowd fired up. Mm -hmm. And he's a community activist that's just tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Well, he just, he sees it over and over again and he speaks out and he speaks out, but it's happening again and again and again. We have to get to a point where we have some sort of power to where we can stop this from happening over and over again. Now this is happening in Dr. Blue, but what about the hundreds of other black men and women that has went through that same process? We never know about. Mm -hmm. Just now we have the opportunity to broadcast this. But what about the hundreds of other ones pre before her? And so one thing you remind students is that they do have rights. Mm -hmm. They too can be at these meetings. They too need to stand up and be a part of that process and speaking up to talk about the undue process. Mm -hmm. Learn more about the Brown Act. That's, those are things that I did when I was in college, when I was uh, protesting and doing different things on campus in regards to what was right. In fact, um, there was a student that had gotten beaten up across the street very badly mm -hmm. by a, um, I don't want to say the white, it was a white fraternity party and the people there happened to be uh, skinheads and they beat him up really bad. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember he's doing And that. so um, I, I just go back to that and had it not been us standing up for our rights where people were trying to deter us mm -hmm. from marching and from reaching out to the community, reaching out to the NAACP, had it, had it not been us having the guts to do that, I don't think there would have been a lot of changes. At the time, uh, President Wealthy was calling it an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. And it was far from that. This was a college student from Fresno State at a, uh, a, a fraternity party that was 
across the street from Fresno State. Mm -hmm. So if we don't do our own research, we don't do our own homework, this will continue to happen. And I think that's what Reverend Dr. Floyd Harris is just trying to point out. Yeah, he's tired. Yeah. He's exhausted. And we um, all should be kind of tired and exhausted, frankly. Mm -hmm. He's tired that there is no justice. He feels that there's no justice being um, presented to Dr. Blue. He felt that um, um, there's no progress is being made in respect to our black community in getting the type of leadership roles and the type of positions where we can be role models. So after the break, we'll address the, co the list of community concerns, concerns that were uh, presented also at the press conference and the request as well. And we'll see uh, Mel Sanders, mm -hmm. who's also part of Valley Black Talk Radio. He is also a very active in the NAACP. And also Mrs. Pamela King, who will address those concerns and the request that was made directly to the Board of Trustees. You're watching On Me Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back after the short break. Picture perfect. Learn how to take the best photos from celebrity photographer and journalist Ken McCoy in his Primer Photography Workshop, Sunday, April 13th, from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Call 559-273-8780 for more info. Visit Salam Seafoods, located on 841 F Street in Fresno, California, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 p.m. Stop by Yogurt Etc. Great dessert, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., located on 2311 Kern Street. Sunday mornings. My name is Julie Dudley, Dudley Najib. I'm your host along with Linus Najib co-hosting today. And we have been talking in depth about the press conference that was in regards to State Center Community College District undue process. And I always say that I call it early termination of Dr. Deborah Blue where there's not really been any justification. But keeping it focused is really about the undue process. Yes. Violations of the Brown Act, which is what we want to make sure we're educating the viewing audience today. So some of those community concerns that were brought up and read at the press conference, and there was also a handout so people could go back and refer to that, as well as the media, uh, mainstream media that was there as well. What is the current status of Dr. Blue in her role as operations of the district? She wasn't invited from the, to the retreat, I found out. Mm. And so they have a board retreat which goes over all those board goals and all mm. of those things that are going to be happening for the upcoming year. And she's not invited, but no. her term is not up yet. Now, why not? Why wasn't she invited? Isn't that a great question? That's the question. Why? Why? But the deputy do... chancellor was invited. Yeah, but why would you? And the deputy chancellor, there's no position that exists. Why would you lock the right? doors, not invite her, and not go through the process? And I mean, she's not even knowing why. I, I bet you she don't even know why she's been forced to early retirement. So that's so technically she's still a member. They had the special meeting on March 17th to mm -hmm. end her. Emeritus, uh, Chancellor Emeritus, which was supposed to be to the end of 2015. And then at the March 17th, they made a decision to, I guess, move that date up and then hire the 
deputy chancellor, even though there, it wasn't on the agenda. And I keep, I gotta keep reiterating that because that's the process concern that I'm looking at. If we just get on boards and do whatever we want to do, then we're not acting in the best interest of our community. What is that called, by the way? If they just put somebody um, in and that's not on the agenda, and they just hire. It's called a lack of due process and a violation of the Brown Act when you do not have on the agenda listed a particular hired, a hiree, someone who's going to be hired, and nor has uh, Dr. Bill Stewart was even introduced to the community as a possible hire. What is the penalty for that? What, they get slapped on the hand? You're not supposed to do that. I'm going to write you up. You're getting written up for this. What is the penalty for uh, not following directions or not following? The penalty proper is not being elected as a board of trustee, which is what I'm trying to get the viewing audience. Forget what the Brown Act violations as far mm -hmm. as what the penalty is for that. I am saying the penalty uh, as far as in front of the public should be you can't be elected again because you are not following due process. You're doing whatever you want. You're taking the power and misusing it. That is not a clear representation of the democratic process. That is not a, a representation of who we are as a community and even as a nation. We, we, we've got to stop just acting because we want things our way. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. When we have elected officials that we are trusting to be able to act on our behalf, that is not acting on our behalf. That is acting in one's own behalf, wanting to do one's own political agenda. And we're supposed to be about the students and the college. And there's so many other concerns. And we've been so consumed with this issue that it's, it's making me sick just thinking about it that, hey, let's just deal with what, uh, call a spade what a spade is here. So are you saying the... Penalty. People need to be taken out of the position or either the whole board needs to be either wiped out and start with someone new. And I know we can't do that because there's a process with that. But at least the three seats that are coming up need to be reevaluated. It needs to be evaluated. If you look at Board of Trustee Eric Payne, he's the only one that voted against. In that six to one vote for March 17th, he was the only Lone Ranger, I want to say, that had to vote against or by himself as far as not for the vote to be able to um, proceed as far as having Dr. Chancellor, um, Dr. Blue moved out of her position early, and as far as just being able to move Dr. Bill Stewart in right away. He was mm -hmm. against that. And because there were process issues, and he has said it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are the concerns. Other concerns uh, of the community include, gosh, I wish, just wish we had more time <laughs> on this program to go over this stuff, the day-to-day -day operations of the district. Now there's two chancellors. Technically, she's supposed to be there until June 30, 2014, and then they, she's still supposed to be in her either emeritus 2015. This is where the confusion so, lies. So wait a minute. So they pan, they pan two, they pan Dr. Blue. Well, no one's seen a contract, and all contracts are supposed to be public. Oh. So you, you see hmm. the issue here, and I, my concern is I just want to make sure the contract is not coming out of where there could be classes for students, and that's what was addressed again at the press conference. So they paying two, you, you're telling me they paying two chancellors. They have to pay Dr. Blue, it's public record. And they paying Even the Fresno Bee talked about the uh, um, quarter of a million that she gets, she still gets her contract. She hasn't done anything wrong. This is what the Board of Trustees have taken upon themselves. Uh, and we already know the allegations, we already know, we talked about it in the other program mm -hmm. with Tate Hill. Yes. And we talked about those allegations, which we won't go into, because right now we're just focused on the process issues. Mm -hmm. That's where we've been talking about and what we need to continue to talk about to let the viewing audience know about. Well, what people are frustrated with is when they have the protests out there, as time goes by, people forget. Right. Especially in our black community, a lot of times we go out there, we show a, uh, a stance, and then as time moves on, life hit us and we forget. about. But it. we can't forget this because again, these process issues are serious. When we're violating our own process and it's ineffective, that's what the community needs to pay attention to. Not mm -hmm. just the black community, the community as a whole needs to pay attention to these process issues because it's gonna keep happening again and again. And whether it's a black professional, it might be a Latina, Latino professional, you never know. It's just gonna keep happening until we deal with the issues. Mm -hmm. Ethics, when you have ethical behavior and non-ethical behavior, we need to start discussing that. We need to start talking about that and putting people in positions who are going to honor our process, honor our policies. And maybe there needs to be uh, the board of trustees that are on there now, maybe mm -hmm. they need to be maybe re-educated on Brown Act and what a violation is and the process and the policy. Maybe they've been there so long. Um, you have um, Mrs. Dottie Smith's position who's been there so long. I think she's been there longer than Pat Patterson. I have to bring those issues up. 
Mm -hmm. Though she'd be of concern. In fact, her position is would be uh, up, and she, I know she has um, an opponent that she's running against. But those are concerns that we have to look at as a community. Okay. And so these are things that they were just trying. The community wanted to know. They also wanted to know have these addressed at an official board meeting in April. There has not been a response yet from the board of trustees whatsoever in regards to being on the agenda for April, which is coming up for that Tuesday meeting or at least being able to have an open forum to discuss this. Another request was having a community task force to mm. be able to address these concerns and issues when they come up from process issues to violate Brown Act violations. Mm. That way this community task force would be well acquainted and maybe to help to help the board. It would be a, a something that would be assisting the board of trustees. Mm. A lot to think about. But mm -hmm. doors are locked. Doors cannot be locked before a special meeting. And not allowing the public to have a voice or a Well, question. they said the janitor locked in by accident. So twice. So before the meeting was had even started, because we know that Tate Hill got there early, mm -hmm. and the doors were not open. And there were mm -hmm. other media and people standing outside. Okay. Okay, so then after, uh, so during the closed session, it's one thing, but you still are allowed to have those doors open in the public session because when they come back to report, those doors are supposed to be open and they were still locked. So okay. even after like around the 8, 30, 9 o'clock hour, again, you know, I think Barfield, Texas, let us know the doors were locked again. These are things that they, we should be concerned about it. It's a public meeting. These are our public tax dollars going to pub, a public entity and doors are locked. They were, locked, of, they, they were locked. locked. They were locked. Was there chains on the doors, or they just doesn't matter? They couldn't get in. Doors <laughs> okay. locked. Again, let's bring up the issues. Doors being locked. That's okay. one issue. Okay. Another issue is the agenda item that was listed, and they also talked about that. The agenda item didn't have anything about a new hire, anything about a new position for deputy chancellor. So that's kind of a combined issue if you look at that. Mm -hmm. The fact that the deputy chancellor or new position or new hire was nowhere on that agenda. Mm -hmm. It's all about dismissal of employee. The same thing that's been on the agenda for the last other three special meetings concerning Dr. Blue. We already knew it was about Dr. Blue. So to have a hire during that, and not only that, but to have the hired person or the person to be hired in the closed session, mm -hmm. that's a violation of the Brown Act because... You, you know, one thing, somebody came up to me um, and said, well, why should I care about what happened? That don't concern me. Why should I care about... Until it happens to you. And that's the sad part. We don't care until it happens to us. And mm -hmm. I think that's the worst attitude for us to have. That sense of apathy is why we have so many things wrong in our nation today. Why we have from poverty, why we have issues with supporting one another, even within the African American community. We're only concerned about ourselves at that moment or concerned about our jobs at that moment. But what if that was your job? Mm -hmm. What if that was your job on the line? What if eventually it is your job on the line and somehow they booted you out or forced you into early retirement? Those are mm -hmm. things to think about. Okay. And I guess before we go to break, we're going to hear the comments from Mel Sanders and Pamela King of the NAACP, and this is where they're talking about the community request. Let's take a look. Hey. Yeah. Well, I'm Mel Sanders. I'm the I'm the chair of the political action chair, committee for the NAACP, and I just wanted to share with you there's a few things that that uh, we want to make sure that you're aware of in terms of the actions that were taken. There's a there's a thing called the Brown Act. And that is, a, for public agencies, that is something that, a tool that is used to make sure that they have transparency and that they follow a particular flow in meeting and letting information out so that folks know what's going on. And based on what was shared with us and what we've seen, there's some questions about whether or not that happened. So we want to make sure we keep people clear and understanding how that process flows. The other thing we want to do is we want to talk to other organizations and begin working with those trustees and start establishing town hall meetings. because. That's, the decisions are made by the seven people that are elected. The chancellor works for them. They, she follows or he follows the instructions of the board. If the board doesn't know what to do or has a, 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 a different opinion of how to do things, then it's our job as community people to make sure that they understand what the rules are. And I think it's very important that we move forward from here and joining with other folks in our community, other organizations, and anyone who would like to be a part of it, please contact us at the NAACP that if you want to be a part of that, that information sharing piece to make sure that those folks who are sitting in those chairs understand what their role is and that you are paying attention and you know what they're supposed to be doing, I think you'll see that can change a lot in terms of how they move forward from here. Most of the time, city college, the board of trustees meetings, most people don't, are not even aware of what goes on. It's under the radar screen. 
this issue has really brought this to surface and we need to take this opportunity to really uh, bring the community aboard and make sure they're at every stage yes. a part of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Um, as a representative from the Fresno branch of the NAACP, uh, we would like to make sure that a community uh, task force is established to provide recommendations and report to the board any anything regarding transparency, the HR process, and community involvement. It is important that the community be a part of this process. Yes. Uh, we are also asking that a a formal board at a, at a formal board meeting. Um, that the questions that we have talked about today in regards to due process and hiring process, uh, we would like to have all of these issues uh, at a formal Board of Trustee meeting in April. And we would like a meeting with the district senior leadership. We're not sure who the leadership is at this point, uh, but the deputy chancellor and perhaps a representative from the board. So these are the, some of the things that we need to do in order to have our community a part of this process. Thank you. So they talked about what's supposed to happen next, and you heard it, mm -hmm. where they were giving a community request to the board of the SCCCD, there's three C's, right? Yes. The <laughs> board of trustees, as far as being able to be on the agenda and being able to have these um, concerns addressed and being able to know how this is happening in 2014, amazing. And they're also telling the students that you too need to get involved, so we appreciate that. After the break, we'll also hear from Tate Hill who explains to the community how they can find out about these meetings. These special meetings just get called out randomly and posted in 24 hours. Again, these are possible violations of the Brown Act. And so we'll talk about that after the break. We'll be right back. Picture perfect. Learn how to take the best photos from celebrity photographer and journalist Ken McCoy in his Primer Photography Workshop, Sunday, April 13th, from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Call 559-273-8780 for more info. Visit Salam Seafoods, located on 841 F Street in Fresno, California, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 p.m. Stop by Yogurt Etc. Great dessert, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., located on 2311 Kern Street.
mornings. My name is Julia Dudley Naji. I'm here with Linus Naji, and we were just going through piece by piece the press conference that happened last week with students. We had a lot of uh, African American leaders that were there, and they too had concerns in regards to process. Some were also very passionate about how this has been an ongoing thing, keeps happening, keeps happening. Right now, we're going to listen to some comments from Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce President and CEO Tate Hill who talks about how can you find out about the State Center Community College District meetings, which are public. Mm -hmm. People can go to, uh, you and I can go to these meetings. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have been. And we can help be the watchdog or police the situation of what's happening. Let's take a look. Just, just to add, so it's important that you're here today, but it's important that you come to these board meetings. Yes. The board meeting information is put right here where it says agenda yes. is published every week. You can go and find out what's happening, and you want to make sure that you come. And so it's important for them to see you here now, yeah. but it's important for them to see you when the decision is being made at yes. the board meeting, okay? So um, we definitely want to make sure that you stay connected with us, uh, with our On Me uh, media. You can see this uh, wild program. Uh, the program will be on, on their network. You can connect on social media or Facebook to stay connected to what we're doing. And that information is right on the top of your press release there. So we don't, we want to stay connected with you. Okay. okay. All right. And so it's important that you come to the board meetings uh, that are on uh, one of the regular Tuesday. Tuesdays. Okay. So, so on first Tuesday of the month, come to the board meeting. Hopefully this, um, uh, at the next board meeting, this will be a part of the agenda, but whenever it is, we want to make sure that you're here. The, the board meetings are usually right here, or it'll tell you where the board meetings are at. But it's really important for them to see you as students. They'll see us and they'll get tired of us, right? Uh, but if they see you all, that makes all the difference in the world when they see you as students, um, as students, because they're here for you. We're here for you. So it's really important that you come to the board meetings, you know, fill out a little form to have something to say. It doesn't have to be long or deep, but just the fact that you're there and present is really important. So we want to see you at the next board meeting. So it's not, it doesn't end today. Yeah, that's right. This is just the first step. All right? Yeah. All right. All right. So do we have a commitment from you all yes. to be a part yeah. of it? Yes. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. All right, so Tate actually told people where they can, he pointed to the wall mm -hmm. to show people, this is where you can see where these meetings are, where they're posted. I know that there's an anonymous letter that was uh, going around and this person happens to work for the district and is afraid to let their name be known. And, and I understand that because of mm -hmm. what is going on and these lack of process issues that are happening right now. And in that letter, this person, individual, talked about the fact that things are not posted correctly Mm. as far as information in regards to these quick special happening meetings that happen within a 24-hour period. They also were concerned about the agenda items. So all the things that we're discussing are the same concerns that other staff members uh, at Fresno City College, Reedley College, have the same concerns. We're mm. not talking about anything that is out of the ordinary or anything extraordinary. It is what it is. Is there a certain time limit to call a special meeting like that to where, where they can allow the community and everybody else know so they can attend and and be there present, or they can just it's call a special meeting. Supposed to be these meeting. 24 hours, but these are supposed special meetings are supposed to be designated according to the Brown Act for real emergencies, a danger to students, a danger to the campus. Maybe it's a flash flood where everything's just flooded out and the students can't go to school. Maybe an accident has happened to one of the chancellor cabinet members. God forbid. But that's what the special meetings are supposed to be for. It's not for to it's just remove. It's not supposed to be firing and hiring people. That's it, not what special it's, meetings it's, are supposed to be for. Well, you, she, they force her into retirement. So it, is she doing something that's so drastic well, to where they do a special meeting? This is what the student comments, meeting? and we'll look at that Q&A right now that students were asking, and because they were asking us, and we keep telling them, hey, we're trying to find out just like you are. It takes you getting involved, so because I'm sure they're tired of hearing our voice. Let's take a look at some of these student comments who had some questions, and I think the first one comes from Mr. Hawley, who was the president of Simba, and then you'll see some other comments from a very passionate 57-year-old woman who is also a Fresno City College student. Let's take a look. When these decisions are being made, is there a better way to get that information to us as students? 
because I noticed that when I first found out about this, more than 80% of the students that I asked had not a clue to what was going on. So that's the issue right there. And I think that as the students, seeing how these decisions affect us, we need to be involved in that. Email, 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 email. Yeah, I think they should email, they email everything I mean, too. yeah, definitely, I, I agree. That, that information could be shared on the student website and your newspaper. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of ways for the district to be able to share about board meetings. They email when they want their money. Oh, or something's happening, something else is happening, you happening miss the class, or you know, my, my question, you know, is to everyone that's out here. Like he said, I heard it this morning when I walked into class. That was shocking to yeah. me. Because, see, Dr. Blue works over on Willow, where I met with 99.9% .9 white people. And when she come in our class and speak to us in our entrepreneur class and stuff about black business getting ahead, this is a black face to look at. This is what it say, I'm the only black person in my entrepreneur class there. But I see someone with that prestige come in, this is a role model. What are we placing back? Are yeah. we going to put another black person in her place so yeah. we have another black one to look at? They say, hey, if they did it, they arrived, I can too. Yeah. See, I'm from the South. I'm from North Carolina. And this is seen like a, a real hangman going on here. I thought they quit hanging us. And I'm here in California, and I'm seeing the same thing. I experienced back on the East Coast. And so where do we go to get these here questions answered? Yeah, that's you know, right. if you're going to uproot her, are you going to put something back there for us to stand on as a black race? That's right. Is they going to put leaders, anything there for us? That, to look on in, Who do we district? get to look up to? I came here several years ago and walked in the class and didn't know black people was important. Yeah, now. I'm 57 years old learning about my race. Huh. Learn Say about it. my people. Say it again. Say it again. So who are we going to replace that can teach us that? I asked the question when I came here, this Dr. Stewart, who he is, have he taught an Afrim class? They say, oh, he did a lot for the black races. No, I don't care about the organization. Well, did, I don't about care about what he did out there. Have he taught an Afrim class that he can teach a black person how to stand and walk in the fullness of who they are? Yeah. yeah. This, these are my questions. These are the things I need to know. You know, when you take somebody and replace them, are you placing equal value? I don't care about how many years he worked their way up. We got a black race of children coming up yeah. who don't know who they are. Yeah. Say that again. Is he able to see again. them, see who they are? Can he portray to them? We need black studies going, not just on college level, junior high, high school, all the way down to yeah. elementary. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Can this chapter stand up and say, let's fight for that? Yeah. Yeah. I got black children coming up through the school system here in California. Yeah. Know nothing about who they were. Say that again. I was say 54 when I learned. We're going to keep this the same generational learning. thing going, that we forever stay learning. down, we will always be under feet. Who is the black person who's going to stand up and say, hey, they tried to keep us down, but we can move, we can go forward. Yeah. These are the questions that I, what, I want to hear for Phil while you remove this woman. Yeah. I'm quite sure she ain't stolen no money because the school is always raising our book prices. <laughs> they always raising our parking lot prices, so they ain't got no money to steal. <laughs> So what was the major crime <laughs> that you're going to rip our role yeah, model out? That's, that's my question. Why? What was it? And these are the things I would like to know. Yes. Why? So, Linus, what did you think about the student comment, the 57-year-old student who said is, if she feels like a role model has been cut out of her life or cut out of um, her presence, and are you going to get someone else to re replace? Well, you know, it's, 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 it's tragic. You know, to see how heartfelt she was, to see a role model that looks like her, that can relate to her, and to be ousted out of her position. And she wants, if they're going to let her go, let somebody else replace her that looks like her, you know, um, instead of something that's totally opposite of what she is and that can relate so to So I think her. her passion was coming. She came from the South, and I think yes. her passion was really saying, what's going on here? I'm in California. This is not supposed to be happening. We're not supposed to be going through these type of issues. Well, she was mentioning uh, it's like a lynching in a way. Is she feel it's been a lynching. We, the same stuff that's happened on the East, where she's from, East Coast, mm -hmm. is the same thing she's seeing locally here in Fresno, California, on the West Coast. So she was very uh, fired up mm -hmm. and very um, concerned. And we have to remind people that students had no idea 
what's going on. They have no idea. No, There's no. been no email sent out, and I guess they're left out of the process when really the board of trustees, it deals with them. Yes. When they're making those decisions, it's dealing with what's happening on these campuses to the students. Yes. How can you let um, a, a person of leadership at that statue go without nobody knowing? Right. You know, <laughs> is something wrong with that? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, it's not something wrong. It was purposely done, and that's the intentional mm -hmm. politics that I'm talking about. Yes. that we should be concerned about. I understand politics when you're trying to get your vote and sway the vote, but politics where it's just dirty and wrong. That's what I'm concerned about. That's mm -hmm. what I'm very concerned about. So we're going to look at uh, also Kyande Suwazi, who was is a retired professor, but also still teaches at Fresno City College. Let's take a look at his quick comment. Say it, but I want to say this to you, to all our young people here. Uh, 1970, there were about, uh, I think, about four black instructors at, in this district, maybe. I think I'm the last full-time uh, black male faculty instructor at this college. So something's happened between the time I was hired and the time I retired. And so what I want to say to you all, you stick together. You'll be about love for each other. You'll be about the unity that we got to have. Yes. Because if we don't, we'll be back in 1860 again. Yes. If we don't, we'll be back to Jim Crow days again. Right. And it moves slowly, doesn't it? You yes. just don't hire black people. You, you bust the vote. You keep black people from voting. You, you incarcerate more black people. It's, it's like what happened in the 18, that's why we need to study our history. What happened in the 1880s. So I'm just going to be real brief. And I just want to say this to everybody here. Forward together, backward never. I want everybody to repeat that. Forward together, backward never. One more. And we're back. You heard Dr. Kindy Swazi. We always call him doctor, but because he's our doctor, yes. we say doctor of knowledge. Kindy Swazi talked about how it's 1970s, and he's looking at how it's becoming a diminished population in regards to African American professors. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at the professors there or the staffing there as I would say. There's no African-American male or female mathematicians. There's no African-American male or female scientists. There's no African-American male or female in most, or if any, I think you said any, any of the departments, But I think correct? it's more so the core classes, because I know in the business department there mm -hmm. are some African-American yes. professors. But at the, the key is if they're full-time. Yes. I think you were talking about full-time. Yeah, full-time. But the population at Fresno City is, I, I know, at least 20 to 30 percent African-Americans. Mm -hmm. So there's no representation of the students' population that's on, as a staff, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, not, that's not good. So as we look and wrap up our final comments, can you believe an hour's already gone by? This always wow. happens, right? And I'm still looking at, I still got to stick with the process issues. All these special meetings that were held, we went to the one, and as I'm reading my notes, the special meeting that was held on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on that March 1st. Mm. And at least they allowed public comments, but they didn't realize that many people were going to show up, had moved to a bigger room. We had, um, I, I think it was one of the, um, well, I think I, I want to say one of the workers there that was trying to not allow the media to come in, mm -hmm. and it's a public meeting. You can't do that. You just can't tell mm -hmm. them you can't come in. It's different if it's a closed session, but we know better. We know we can't go into a closed session. Then we have the March 4th special meeting, which was three days later, and that was before the uh, regular board meeting that was intended, mm -hmm. that became a challenge because that took up some time and all the dramatics and all the votes. Well, we, at first it was a six to two vote. And I know that um, a board, a board of trustee member Payne asked for it to be a public vote because mm -hmm. he wanted to see so that the public know, know the faces of who was voting on these early retirement. And at that time, it was Dottie Smith and Eric Payne that were going against that. Then we have another special meeting, all these special meetings being called, and it's not a danger to the students or the population per se. Whereas March 17th on a Monday at 5.30 p.m., and as a former, again, that's the agenda item, that it's about um, employment, uh, discipline, dismissal issues. Nothing else on the agenda. i got to remind people, nothing else. And yet doors are locked. 
and now we have these process issues and we see Dr. Bill Stewart is hired as deputy chancellor, it's announced the very next day that as, as of March 18th, 2014, he's a deputy chancellor. This is again, not concerning Dr. Bill Stewart, who I, I'm told has done a phenomenal job when he was chancellor from, I think it was 1979 to 1999. Um, and this is a man that's just, I guess, trying to fill the shoes of whatever someone else is wanting him to do on the board of trustees. So these are some politics involved. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to say about mm -hmm. my comments. Is that I don't like the politics involved. Well, they brought him in because he has a history of, of developing a relationship in a black community and maybe quieting down some of the uh, rhetoric that's going out there. Um, what is rhetoric with undue process? It's just a fact. Well, well the, he, 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 they looking at he has a history and he has the credentials and he can step in and kind of smooth this Can't over. Can't smooth over undue process and that's what I want to remind the audience of. Mm -hmm. Before we leave here well, that's today. What, what, who else is he going to bring in? Mm -hmm. They have to go in the past and bring in some great um, ex-chancellor to um, bring about some sort of But I wonder if he's this. really being caught up to speed on what's going on, or is he kind of just brought in smoke and mirrors and he has no idea what's going on? But then again, mm -hmm. he was in the closed session where he wasn't supposed to be, so perhaps he does know what is happening and what's going on. Well, it can go either way. Yeah. You know, it can go either way. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this edition of On Me Sunday Mornings. We will have more comments online, more extended community comments that if you didn't get to see them on the full program here, it's on the onmetv.amptvnow.com. And that's on mobile and internet where you can continue to watch. Thank you for watching. Have a great week. Picture perfect. Learn how to take the best photos from celebrity photographer and journalist Ken McCoy in his Primer Photography Workshop, Sunday, April 13th, from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Call 559-273-8780 for more info. Visit Salam Seafoods, located on 841 F Street in Fresno, California, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 p.m. Stop by Yogurt Etc. Great dessert, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., located on 2311 Kern Street.